All right, guys. Um, Troy from Dietrich's Outfitters here. I wanted to make a video about how I go about self-filming, saddle hunting, and one sticking. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there about all these separate things, but I always feel like you always see people climbing and they don't have all their gear with them and things like that. So kind of wanted to run through a full setup of how I do it. Maybe it can help some of you guys out. If I miss anything, let me know. I'll try to be detailed with uh, the equipment that I use, but I'm sure I'll miss some things. So first things first, I'm coming to the tree all with my pack on my back. I always wear my saddle into the woods. I almost never put it in my pack. Maybe mostly because I don't have any room in my pack, but uh, I just find it easiest to wear it in. I'll open up my pack. I'm running a Kafaru Striker. And that's where all my uh, saddle gear is, my platform and my one sticking stuff. Um, so I'll pull that out. This will get strapped in with one buckle. Put that aside. I'll leave my knee pad in there for now. Buckle that back up for now. And just put that off to the side. Next thing I'll do is pull out my rappel rope. This is what I use to pull up my pack because my pack weighs so much with all my filming gear. It's hard to climb, it's hard to one stick with it on your back. If I was doing four sticks, it's not really a problem. That's how I used to do it. So attach this to the top of my pack. Like so, all right, next thing I'll do is hang my platform off my saddle like so grab my my mad rock my carabiner I always leave all this stuff hooked up after I'm done hunting I always leave it all hooked up so I can get after it right away when I get to the bottom of the tree and not have to worry about it I'm using a lap link I know a lot of people don't like that but that's what I chose to use this year Before I do that, I'll, of course, I'll get my uh, bow pull-up rope because I'm not going to climb with that either. I have a metal s beaner with hockey tape on it to quiet it down when I hook it to my bow. I usually hook it right here and then I'll hook the other side. to my saddle. That's wrapped up in a figure eight configuration. Usually doesn't ever get tangled, but of course when I'm making this video, it seems to want to get tangled. I'll put that right here on my saddle. And we're about ready to climb. Of course I'll put my rappel rope tether up as high as I can around the tree or I'll hook up to my bridge I run my bridge all the way uh, tight when I'm climbing when I come down it doesn't much matter I don't usually climb with a GoPro on my chest so hopefully this doesn't get in the way all right probably could have went a little higher with that but I'm gonna have to do a maneuver around this tree up here anyway around this branch I did try the platform at the top of the stick but I didn't like it I'll go over the reasons why once I get up there okay we're ready to climb Most of the time I don't even tether to the tree until I get up to the top of my stick on the first maneuver. With one sticking you're not really tied in quite yet, but you're only a couple feet off the ground, six foot or so. Just the risk you take when, when you one stick. Okay, 
So that's up roughly as high as I can. I'm actually only going to go up to about there with my platform anyway because I want to save some time and don't want to get up in that crotch too much. I had to pick this tree because of the sunlight in the video, so I would have picked a straighter one. But this is also a good practice to show you guys too. All right. I'm going to grab my stick just like you know you do and get it placed up to the next spot for the video I'm going to hang my platform off for right about there so for this if this knot wasn't there well maybe I'll just put it here for for now So I'm gonna pretend this is, like I said, my last, my last move. Maybe I would make one or two more, depending on my hunting situation. And I'm gonna double wrap this, just because it is that lap link, and don't want to ever have that come out of there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my platform on. I'm running the pet Predator platform. I really like this, it's small, and uh, it's light, of course. And I'm actually using daisy chain, some amp steel daisy chain to hold it to the tree. Started doing this at the end of last year. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck sometimes, but I do like it for the simplicity, and the, uh, it's a little lighter, and usually you can get it just as, just as tight. All right. So I'm going to put this, actually I'm going to put this a little bit lower. Probably around here, just so my tether's at the right spot. Okay, I do run a squirrel step off the bottom of my, or off the back of my daisy chain. If you guys aren't doing that, I highly recommend it. It really allows you to take some better shots. So anyhow, with this, I like to kind of do a little style trucker's hitch here to get it as tight as I can. I will take the end of my daisy chain and just put it through another daisy chain loop to get a little bit more leverage on how tight I can get this thing okay so that's where my leverage comes into effect so that's not as tight as I would like but that's probably what I'm gonna have to go with obviously if it's not that tight you you cinch it down put it down on the tree as far as you can and, and cam it over it's actually plenty tight. Wrap this slack around. I'll finish camming that over in a second. All right. A lot of people complain about these things not biting good, but I mean, look at the look at it into the tree there. It's biting extremely well. All right. So next thing. I do is I got some broken tree branches here all right next thing I do is I pull up my pack I used to like to pull my bow up before my pack in case I had any action come in but I found that I can't really set up with my bow hanging on the tree my camera arm and everything so I'll go ahead and take the end of my rappel rope and pull this pack up it's nice because I use this eight millimeter rope uh, if this is paracord, you just absolutely tear your hands up, but with this 8 millimeter, it just pulls with ease. Go ahead and flop that right there. I should leave this on. And drop the rope. We'll wind that up here in a minute. Alright. 
So one thing I like to always do is I use a daisy chain to hang my backpack. Um, so first thing first is I always put this around the tree and clip my backpack to it because uh, I've already knocked backpacks out of the tree before and broken cameras and stuff like that. So, so that's why we always do this right away. There's nothing fancy, no tricks to this really. I just hang it. For now, I'll just clip it close just in case it were to drop. It wouldn't go too far. All right. So what I'll do a while also is get my bridge out a little bit further so I have a little bit more room to work. Okay, run it probably about right there. Freeze up some working space. All right, so hopefully you guys can see all this. I'm gonna try to pull this stuff out of my pack in order here. Um, we'll go ahead and do the hardest part first is the camera arm. This is a, um, I believe it's Jeremy Riggins um, Outdoors. He makes these camera arms similar to the Lone Wolf pocket arm. I've used them and I did not care for it. I do like this one. This might be my first year running it. Um, and I'm using a daisy chain on this because that was my one beef with his uh, is that the strap just, I, I just could never get the strap right. So I've been trying to get better with using daisy chains. They, they just save so much space. And if you do it right, you can actually get them extremely tight. I generally hang my pack underneath my camera arm <clears throat> so I'm gonna try to slide this down a little bit and there you go and I like to run my camera arm somewhere a little above knee height and I'll run it I don't know about right here on the tree I am using a double arm not a triple arm I find that's a little bit easier for saddle hunting to be honest with you I hear people say the exact opposite, but this is just what I've found. And I'll try to do the same thing with this as I did with my platform, with the leverage. Because these camera arms, the tighter you get them is, uh, it's kind of the trick. If they're not tight here, it'll flop all around. So like I said, I like to run it somewhere between waist and knee height or so. This is probably my biggest pet peeve with self-filming is strapping the dang camera arm to the tree. If it wasn't for this part right here, I would be a much happier man. Okay, we're gonna do our old leverage trick, trucker's hitch style, and get as tight as we can with, um, without losing my camera arm here. So it doesn't look like I can try to get it a little bit tighter. There we go. Maybe I can get this then. Yeah. Okay. So. As much as a pain in the neck this is with the daisy chain, I honestly don't think it's any easier with a strap. If you guys have any secrets, feel free to drop them in the comments because, uh, again, this is, this is my least favorite part. <laughs> All right, so we'll level this out. Got a little ball level on the top there. What I'll do is put leverage on my arm right here to help get that bubble close to centered as possible. All right, I'm gonna just call that level. It's not too bad. I can fix most of it in post if it's a little bit out. And this arm's not too loose where it should slide around. All right, I'll grab my camera, my main camera that I'm using. I keep it inside a lens case. If things big I just got it this year I used to use a smaller camcorder um, but anyhow I keep it inside that lens case to protect it a little bit slap that on there that's simple enough put my uh, shotgun mic on it turn that on right away 
turn it back off, but that's just what I would do in person because that doesn't suck up hardly any battery. It's got a nine volt battery in there. So if you forget to turn it on, you're kind of SOL. Plug in my remote. I'm using a VeraZoom remote and uh, we're ready to shoot video. All right, that's enough of that. That's all set up. So I always run a second angle GoPro cam. This is a fake old cam that I'm just using for example. I run this on my tether. And uh, you run this on wide, obviously. Most most uh, action cams are ran on wide anyway. But if you run this on wide, it'll uh, it'll catch everything. It'll catch a lot, a lot more than you might even think. You, stuff behind you, it'll catch. All right, I use that gear tie there, tighten it up because I can't get tight enough on this little eight millimeter rope. So I'll run that, that can get tight in too so this doesn't swing around. But that that's my second angle cam. It's pretty sweet because even if I'm drawing like this, it's still watching me the whole time. Um, all right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is hang my gear strap. Um, instead of a fancy gear strap, I literally just use my tether. I seriously feel like this works the greatest. I don't know why everyone doesn't do it. Everyone has their preference, I guess, but I like to just use this as my, because I need that tether anyway if I'm getting around some branches and whatnot. I'll just wrap this up. This can just be another gear hook. I'll run my range finder to it somewhere, just anywhere. Sometimes I'll put my binoculars on there. I'll most definitely put my milkweed on there. Okay. Put my milkweed up here. You can run it wherever. And then this is also where I hang my, my bow from. I use this monster hook. They used to be, well, they still are for hanging your impact and drill off your work belt works perfectly on this uh, on this cord it does work bigger on the big on it does work good on the larger um, than eight millimeter tethers as well so that's my bow hook I'm done with my pack now I'll swing that down off to the side okay I can hang anywhere it really wants to now I finally am ready to pull my bow up I got to pull that uh, that cord up still i'll just wind this up on my arm we're gonna throw it back down when we rappel down anyway okay oh shoot got my boat rope that might not be good all right i just turn this in an s and flip it down and one thing I've found, I haven't even hunted with this yet, but I've been practicing it a lot. It's good to tidy up this pouch here and not let it hang because these metal clips will bounce off of stuff and make some noise. So that's kind of just like a note to self. This should get all buttoned back up like so. All right, now we'll pull up my bow rope. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see that, but it's literally my boat rope is caught on a on a freaking root. But it's probably good practice to figure this kind of stuff out. So if I can't get it, I'll probably just rip like heck. Oh, that's great. Maybe if I there we go. All right. One thing I'm worried about is this Dynaglide rope that I use. It's nice, it doesn't have any memory or tangle, but it's kind of slippery. It makes me a little nervous lifting my bow up. But uh, with bare hands, it's not too bad, but with gloves, I think it might be a little rough. All right, so of course, as soon as I get my bow up here, I always throw an arrow in it. That's the last thing you want to try to forget. That's the last thing you want to forget. So, it hangs right there. I made a little Kydex hook off my quiver there. Um, I don't like running my quiver off because I'm just very used to just from hunting at a young age running my quiver on when I need a second shot I want my quiver right there instead of off to the side of the tree and stuff like that like a lot of hunters use 
that's totally okay if you can do it that way, but that's just letting you know the way I do it. Wrap my cord back up. We'll use this to repel, to get my repel rope out of the tree rather. And of course to lower my bow again. Set us, that makes it not tangle. I'll just store this in here now since I already took out my, since I already closed up my other pouch. Get my release out, clip that on my bow. And uh, we're ready to hunt. That's all it took. And it took about a half hour or so. Uh, and realistically, I can do it in about uh, somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes, usually, usually like 25 minutes. Um, but you can see this can get full rotation with two arms rather than three. I can pretty much sh shoot wherever I want. Um, the platform, uh, I have so much more freedom with this, it's worth me carrying an extra pound and a half, whatever that platform weighs, uh, instead of just using the platform on the top of the stick. Plus now I can stand like this on the top of my stick, and then even greater is that squirrel step on the back, I can put my foot right there. Now I can shoot all the way, all the way around the tree, quite literally. Um, so, that's, uh, that's the full setup. I don't think I forgot anything. If I did, let me know. Hopefully this helps some people using daisy chains instead of straps. Um, gear, this is a big thing for me, is that um, my linesman belt, if you will, turns into my, my gear strap. And uh, it serves me really well. Here's a close-up of my gear strap. I'm running that ropeman on there, and it just cinches up fairly tight. This is that hook, monster hook. I cut it down and put some hockey tape on it. Also, this is that Kydex loop I made. So it's pretty strong. My bow, range finder. This is the camera arm I'm using. Very zoom remote. Canon G50. Video mic, the original video mic road. Daisy chains to hold everything. Kofar striker pack. This is my Predator platform. I did a custom paint job on that. I actually sprinkled some sand on it and then put a heavy coat of paint on it to give it some grip. That was one complaint with this is it did not have much uh, grip. My one stick is a Eastern Woods Outdoors 15 inch with the two step 15 inch aider. Uh, double step. Am steel. Game cleat. You know the drill. Alright, one thing I noticed is I forgot to put my knee pad on, but I'm going to climb back down now. But obviously, that's self explanatory. You just put your um, hot seat around the, around the tree right here so your knees can go into it if you want to sit like this in the saddle. Which I do a lot, so I'm a big proponent of that. I don't like wearing the knee pads. My legs are too skinny. They kind of move all around, so I like to strap the, the pad to the tree. All right, we're going to clean up. So the way this looks is on a, obviously kind of reverse order of what we did before. Um, I am going to leave my bow up a little bit longer and put away all my camera gear first, and then I'll lower my bow. So that's the only thing that's a little bit out of order from, from the way up. Here's a pro tip for you. These silicone gel things, I like to put these in a couple of my pouches. In case things get wet, it helps dry, dry the pack out. I put uh, bungees on the end of all my straps and ropes and stuff like that. It just helps me wind them up a little bit better. Okay, that's ready to go back in. One thing I do do is this uh, is really sharp here. So the last time I put it away, I forgot to put this back on, but I did make this little, this little uh, pouch, if you will, to cover up those sharp edges just so nothing gets cut in my, in my bag. Just another step. All right. This gets put away. The camera stays right there. This kind of just floats on top. 
And that's pretty much all I carry in the bulk in my big part of my bag here. Okay, so double check that, that we untied this here. So we're free to free to go down. Okay, now we're down here. Take this off. Throw my stuff on the ground. So that's not weighing us down anymore. And I will take my carabiner off so I can take my mad rock off my rope. Again, I'd be doing this a little bit quieter <laughs> if I was in the deer woods. Okay. Like so. The stuff I keep handy because like I said in the beginning of the video, I want to hook this all back up before I, uh, before I clean up today. All right, so up there, I was, I don't know, 10 feet up or something like that. Up there is my lap link and the rest of my rappel rope. That's going to come down. This Dynaglide helps it come down real easily. I will take this off. I don't know what's going on here with my Dynaglide. And pull this rappel rope through. All right. Then I will take my, unhook this obviously. We'll wrap that up in a second. Then I will take my mad rock back and I will reinstall this the appropriate way. Okay. Get my S beaner going through the appropriate way. I'll leave about six foot or so at the tag end and I will wrap up my rope. I just wrap it up on my arm like I'm wrapping up an extension cord. This uh, eight millimeter Oplux is, is the bomb. It doesn't get tangled. It's really easy to work with. It's super light and super strong. Like I said, this way you're, just all, you're all ready for the next tree that you're gonna climb. The rest of this, I'll stuff right back in this pouch right here. That honestly is the one thing I don't really care if it's very organized. I like to stay organized with everything else, but that doesn't bother me. I just cinch that all up. Actually, I'm going to leave this off because I'm going to put my Dynaglide in there still. Now we're ready to button this back up. Obviously, we're done, but I'm going to keep on showing you every little little deal here just so I don't leave anything out. This is my Kafaru striker pack. I did get Eastern Woods Outdoors Dano to make me some custom pouches for the front so they're a little bit quieter than the standard Cordova material that's pretty pretty noisy. Okay this sometimes do differently but it doesn't it doesn't matter the general scheme of things is just cinching this down nice and tight okay it's one nice thing about one sticking you don't have to worry about stacking all your sticks you can put that back in a matter of seconds and this sits right here on top buckle them in and then that one final strap I run just so my bag's not bouncing all around and whatnot. Okay, and we're ready to rock and roll again. All that is secure and ready to go. I hope that video helped you guys. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Give me a follow if you want. Maybe I'll try to make some more videos like this. And um, don't forget to sign up for the 2021 Big Buck Contest before October 2nd. That's for this part of Pennsylvania or any part of Pennsylvania if you want to bring a deer here, though, to get scored. All right, guys. Till next time.